So I want to talk about the insufferable smugness of the DNC and the RNC. It's not just the DNC. We haven't gotten around to having the RNC yet, but believe me, that's going to be just as bad, if not worse. And yes, it can get worse than the DNC. So, um, this really captures the entire mood, the entire feeling or vibe of the DNC. Um, when it ended, so Eva, Long Eva Longoria was hosting, was it the first night or the second? I think the first night. It was the first night, I think. She was hosting, and um, so at the end of it, she says bye. Now, we could talk a, a lot about even the fact that they have her doing this. The Democrats love to lean on the fact that a lot of Hollywood people like the Democrats. And that that's like becoming who their base is. Like, wealthy, well-connected, well-known people, and mix in, like, suburbanites. Like, this is becoming the Democratic Party. It's, it's decidedly becoming not a party of labor and working people. Now, I'm not saying the Republicans are a party of working people, because they're not. They're even worse than the Democrats on that front. But, like, this is, the Democrats proudly are embracing this whole, like, yes, we're the Hollywood party. Yeah, but people might like Hollywood stars when they're on screen for a movie or a show, but in real life, everybody kind of views them as insufferably smug and insular. So I don't know if that's something that really you should be championing. But anyway, so Eva Longoria is hosting, and at the end of it, so she wraps up the show, and then this plays, this is the end of the DNC. This is what they decided to end it with, a music video. Take a look. Good night. But it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got to be well it's time we start Children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down I talked to many people about this. Every single one of them was convinced. I thought that was a parody. Like, I thought people on Twitter were messing around and they were, like, pretending, like, imagine if this was part of the DNC, tee hee hee. No, that's real. They actually, they actually played that. It looks like some Chappelle show skit. Other people were saying, like, Tim and Eric or something. I don't know. I've never... I'm basically a grandpa. I don't, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> but Chappelle Show, I was like, yeah, that looks like it was a Chappelle Show thing. It's like a shitty green screen and like fake drama and he's got the cape and stuff. Like, Or it's like, there's like some adult swim thing that you'd see late at night. Like, what are, what, what is this? No, they really thought like, oh my God, you guys, we're going to look so cool if we do this. <laughs> I was joking around and I tweeted like, this is the moment Trump won re-election and the tweet went viral. <laughs> I I mean, that's like, now listen, it, the whole night was like that though. That's, that's why this story is like so interesting to me is that you think like, oh, that super out of touch weird moment was like unique. No, the whole night was like that. Guys, Elizabeth Warren was doing some sort of talk or some panel about indigenous people, about Native Americans. But the, you had the whole scandal where you, with the, uh, how are you guys this dumb? How are you guys this dumb? My main takeaway from the entire DNC was like, oh, they could easily still mess this up and lose to Trump. Trump is a ridiculous, disgusting, grotesque, pathetic, corrupt loser. I can't say enough bad stuff about him. But how is it, like, the fact that we're not up. We meaning Democrats. We're not up 15 to 20 points on this guy with a pandemic and a depression. What does that say? It says the Democrats are also incredibly out of touch. Incredibly out of touch. This, If you were going to do the DNC, you shouldn't have done anything at all. But if you're going to do it, the whole thing had to be focused on the crises of our, our day. Climate change, COVID-19, economic collapse. Like... 
you have to focus on that. How are you not talking endlessly about healthcare, Medicare for all, covering everybody? I, I mean, instead we have panels with Elizabeth Warren where she's talking about Native American rights or something. And we have songs like this and celebrities left and right. And I, I just... Okay, so... Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Ridiculous. Seems fake. Seems absurd. Um, but now let me tell you what's going on at the RNC. What's going to happen at the RNC? Breaking. Covington student Nick Sandman, Sandman, however you say it, and St. Louis gun-toting couple Mark and Patricia McCloskey are reportedly scheduled to speak at the Republican National Convention. I got one better than that, too. You know who else is there or going to be there? Brock Turner. There was a famous, he was, there was a famous case involving Brock Turner where he was accused of some, you know, not very pretty things. I'm sure many of you know the case. We don't have to rehash it here. Now, regardless of what you think about that case, okay, what are you guys doing? Like, what is, what are the Republicans doing? You, you guys are all way too online. We're going to, are we seriously just going to rehash culture war debates as the entire country witnesses the apocalypse right in front of our eyes as we witness in eviction and foreclosure crisis the likes of which we've never seen in American history where 32% of people in this country last month couldn't pay their rent so we're going to have a homelessness crisis we already have a healthcare crisis like 30 million people have no healthcare in this country we have an economic crisis on top of that, a 20% real unemployment. A lot of the people who still have jobs had to take big pay cuts because of COVID. All these problems. And this is what they're leaning into? This is what they're leaning into. Let's, let's bring back up some goofy-ass culture war nonsense and, like, plant a flag and talk about this endlessly. How out of touch can you be? Now, by the way, there's a reason. There's a method to this madness. There's a reason why they do it. Because what else are they going to do? What are they going to do? They're going to run on their 2017 tax cut bill, which blew a $2 trillion hole in the deficit and gave like 83% of the benefits to the top 1%. Basically, their 2017 tax cut bill was like, let's give rich people all the money. Let's give them everything. Like, that's what they did. It, they're they're proud oligarchs. What else are they going to do? Are they going to run on, you know, bailing out corporations to the tune of five trillion dollars? Is that what they're going to run on? Full corporate socialism, which is what they implemented. Is that what they're going to run on? Are they going to proudly run on that, which nobody likes and nobody agrees with? Is that what they're going to do? So they can't talk about economic stuff because they're on the wrong side of every economic issue, and they're massively, massively corrupt. They're owned by Wall Street. They're owned by Big Pharma. They're owned by the military industrial complex. This is the Republican Party is a wholly owned subsidiary of corporate America. That's what they are. Then you got to sprinkle in the authoritarianism, which they proudly embrace. Trump threatening the Insurrection Act, among many other things. And other than that, the only thing that animates their ideology is let's trigger the libs. Let's own the libs. Whatever the libs are for, I'm against. So, here's some culture war issues. Hey, remember the thing where the two awkward old people were standing out there with guns because they thought protesters were coming at them? Yeah, let's bring them. Let's bring the, the, the Covington kids. Let's bring Brock Turner. Like, taking... We have a country that is collapsing in front of our eyes. And everything is being boiled down to this stupid culture war nonsense and they're leaning into it because they have nothing else. They have nothing else. Nothing at all. Remember when Trump was running on ending the wars and then he didn't? And that we're still in all the wars we were in before? Remember that? Remember that? Weird, he's not talking about how he ended the wars because he didn't. He's not talking about his drone strikes, which are killing civilians, and was a 432% increase over Obama. He's not talking about that. Why? Because nobody, nobody's in favor of that. It's pathetic. He's continuing the status quo. So anyway, here, let's talk about the Covington thing. Let's do that. Let's talk about Brock Turner. Let's talk about, let's have 413 speakers bring up cancel culture and the left with their safe spaces are so dumb. <laughs> Isn't it stupid when college kids have pink hair? Oh, got him. Who cares? Who cares? And there are, there are people who proudly lean into this stuff. 
You guys are dating yourselves, man. You guys are up your own asses sniffing your own farts. Can all of you just shut the fuck up and focus on something serious? Imagine getting lost in the battlefield of the culture war at a time like right now when the real issues have never smacked us in the face harder. That's where we are. So listen, the RNC and the DNC are insufferably smug and they're proving how out of touch they are with the American people.